tickets and saw Worship Lord and went sing along. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood.
is to come. Yes, we Kids, hope to see you real soon. God bless. Good morning, guys. My name is Miss Jen. For those of you that don't know me, and it is my honor to share today's lesson with you. Um, so before we dig into God's word, we're going to need a couple of things. If you don't already have them, please print out the class notes. We have coloring pages there um, and our Bibles. So you can press pause while you gather those things and I'll be waiting. Okay, guys, so at the end of the um, book of Genesis, we learned that Jacob moved his whole family down to Egypt with Joseph. Um, Joseph was the ruler in Egypt, and if you remember everything he went through, his brothers betrayed him, they threw him into a pit, um, he was in jail. So um, would, you, would you say God's plan was still accomplished? Um and his purpose was still accomplished in, in Joseph's life? Absolutely, because he became the ruler. That was God's plan the whole time. So nothing that anyone could do to him um, got in the way. So we have to trust God that he has a perfect plan and purpose for each one of us, for you, for me, and that um, no matter what difficult things we go through, he's with us. His promise is that he never leaves us. So, um, we learn through Joseph's life how faithful he is um, to f accomplish his purpose, like Miss Kira taught. So um, we, the family is now in Egypt. Um, what was uh, the name that God gave to Jacob? Do you, do you guys remember? If you said Israel, you are correct. God said Jacob would be called Israel, and he promised to bring Jacob's family back to the land of Canaan. Israel died after blessing each one of his sons, but Joseph and his brothers stayed in Egypt 
and had children and grandchildren and they kept going so um then we, so we come into the second book of the bible now the book of exodus which continues israel's family in egypt the descendants of israel called israelites were becoming very numerous they were growing and growing and growing um many years later long after joseph and his brothers had died there was a new king and a king in egypt was called pharaoh um so this new king did not know anything about joseph he didn't know what Joseph did for his for the Egyptians or the Israelites. All he knew is that there was this group of people living in Egypt that were growing. And that made him very nervous because he thought that that would um, it would um, put his power at stake. So um, he thought that he could make them stop growing by making them slaves. And so slaves work for free. And do you think that's something that honors God? Absolutely not. Um, so um, I wanted to share something very cool with you guys. A couple of years ago, I went to Baltimore, Maryland with Eli, my son. And we uh, they had a very cool museum, kids museum there. And they had a section of Egypt. And so they had uh, this key with images. So for each letter, there was an image of a hieroglyphic and so I spelled Eli um, in hieroglyphics. So this is the letter E, L, and I. Isn't that cool? I just wanted to share that little interesting thing with you guys. Okay, so we're going to go into the book of Exodus, Exodus 2, and we're going to read big number 2, little 1 through 10. Okay, so I'll give you a chance to look for that. You can press pause while you're looking for it and I'll be waiting. Okay, guys, so let's pray. Um, Father God, I thank you for this day, Lord, and I just thank you for each child that's watching and the children that are not able to watch. I would just pray a special blessing upon each one of them, Lord, and I just pray that you would give them a zeal for you all the days of their lives, Lord, um, and that you would give them a hunger and a thirst for your word and that you would give them wisdom as an understanding as we will dig into your word god in jesus name we pray amen okay so exodus 2 so we're going to read about the birth of moses so now a man of the tribe of levi married a levite woman and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son when she saw that he was a fine child she hid him for three months but when she could hide him no longer she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the riverbank she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it she opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister, his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. That is just so very, very cool. So I have a book that I used to read Eli when he was a baby. And I'm gonna show you some of the pictures because I think that's just so cool. So these are the reeds that the Bible describes and that's an image of Pharaoh's daughter that finding um after she found Moses and drew him out of the water. Very cool, right? Okay. So now let's take a look at our class notes and do question one. So today's class notes have two parts. First, we're going to fill in the blank. Let me show you. We're going to fill in the blank first and then we're going to connect it to a letter or the appropriate answer. 
So number one, Pharaoh commanded that all the Israelite babies be thrown into what? A river. If you said a river, you are right. R-I-V-E-R. -E number one is river. So, but why? Why? Why did he command that the babies be thrown into a river? If you said the letter C, you are correct. Fear came over him. So he was afraid that they would grow up to be soldiers, right? Now, how many months did Moses' mother hide him from the Egyptians? The Bible says three months, right? Um, which is amazing because what do babies do that would make it very difficult to hide a baby? Babies cry, right? Um, he would have been taken away from his family and thrown into the river if they heard him crying, but they didn't. And that just shows you how amazing God is because he protected Moses. He has a plan for him and nothing is going to get in the way of it. So number two, Moses's mother made a blank for baby Moses to put him in the river. What did she make? Did she make a box? No. Did she make a basket? So number two is basket. B-A-S-K-E-T, basket. Why? Why did she do that? So letter F tells us that she could not hide him anymore. The Bible says that she couldn't hide him anymore, so she had to put him in a basket and send them off in the river, right? So number three, Moses is blank. Miriam stayed by the river. Who was Miriam? Moses's sister, right? S-I-S-T-E-R. Number three is sister. So you're going to can why why do you think Miriam stayed by the river? She was watching to see what would happen to her brother. She was watching to see what would happen to Moses. So connect that um number two to A. I mean number three, sorry, number three to A. So who came to the river to bathe? Let's see. Who is she? Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter came to bathe. And do you, who do you think was in control of that, of her coming down at that precise time and saw at the right time to see the basket by the reeds? Who, who ordained that? Who do you think? God, right? God, if you said God, you are absolutely right. There's nothing that happened by accident. So let's go on to question number four. Pharaoh's blank decided to keep Moses even though he was an Israelite baby who was supposed to be killed. Pharaoh's who? Pharaoh's daughter, right? D-A-U-G-H-T-E-R. Why? When she heard him crying, she felt what for him? She felt sorry for him, so you connect number four to the letter G. So she, even though she realized that he was a Hebrew and an Israelite baby, she chose to keep him. Um, so back to Exodus 2. What did Miriam offer to do for Pharaoh's daughter in verse 7? Miriam offered to call a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby. What does it mean to nurse a baby? Nursing a baby means to feed it and to take care of the baby. Um, when Pharaoh's daughter agreed, yes, bring the woman, I'll pay her. Um, who did Miriam go get to take care of Moses? It's in verse Exodus 2, 8. She got Moses' mother. So how awesome is God that he kept the family together still? He's just amazing. Um, so now number five pharaoh's daughter named the baby moses and blanked him as her own son what do you call it when you when someone takes in another child as their own the adopted right so number five is adopted a-d-o-p-t-e-d 
And why did she choose the name Moses? What does that mean? You look at the letter B, I mean, the <laughs> letter B, she drew him out of the water. And that's what Moses means. So because Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, adopted Moses, Moses became a prince. And what do you think life was like for Moses growing up as a prince? What kind of things do you think he learned or he did? I'm sure as a prince, you're treated extra special. He must have worn the nicest clothes and ate the best kinds of food. The Bible doesn't give us many details about Moses' childhood, but we know some things from studying Egyptian history. Moses would have received the best kind of education in subjects like math, politics, religion, writing, music, poetry, as well as military training, sword fighting, archery, and horseback riding. Now, do you think it was a coincidence that he learned all these things or do you think that was part of God's plan? I think that we learn from Joseph's story that God accomplishes his purpose. So there is a purpose in what everything that Moses um, was learning, right? There's a purpose for it. So living as a prince may sound fun, but Moses knew that he was an Israelite, not an Egyptian. His family would have taught him about the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the Egyptians worshipped many false gods. They were also forcing Moses' people to work hard as slaves. The Israelites were making giant bricks, working in fields, and doing whatever the Egyptians told them to do. They weren't free to go wherever they wanted or to take care of their families the way that they wanted to. So how do you think that made Moses feel to see how the Egyptians were treating his people? The Bible tells us how Moses felt, and I'll tell you what happened from Exodus 2. So Moses lived in Pharaoh's palace for 40 years. One day he wanted to find out what was happening to his fellow Israelites. What he saw was an Egyptian beating an Israel slave. Moses was so upset at the mistreatment of his people that he killed the Egyptian and he hit him in the sand. Now that's a wicked thing to do. That wasn't the right thing to do. But let's see what happens. The next day, he went out again to his people. This time he saw two Israelite men fighting each other. Moses asked the man who started the fight, why are you hitting your fellow slave? The slave didn't like Moses' question and he said to Moses something like, what are you going to do? Are you going to kill me too? Fear came over Moses because Moses thought he did something in secret. He thought that he killed someone and hit him and that no one saw. But we know that God saw and now we've learned that people saw. So that just instilled fear because that means that Pharaoh was going to find out. And once Pharaoh found out, he was going to send Moses to be killed. So that's exactly what happened. And Moses fled to the land of Midian, where Pharaoh wouldn't be able to chase him. So in Midian, Moses sat down by a well. There were seven daughters of a, of a priest of Midian that came to water their father's flock. But there were some mean shepherds that wouldn't let the women give water to their, to their flock. When Moses saw this, of course, he stood up for them and he made the shepherds leave and he helped them, the women, to water their animals, to give water to the animals. So the girls ran to their father and told them about what Moses had done to help them. Their father, Reuel, invited Moses to stay with him and his family and eventually Moses agreed to stay with them and worked as a shepherd. So he eventually married one of Reuel's daughters named Zipporah. Moses and Zipporah had a, name, had a son named Gershom. So Moses' life changed a whole lot. He went from being a prince in a palace and now to being a shepherd in the wilderness. He probably thought that he was never going to go back to Egypt or to his people, the Israelites. But we'll see that God had a different plan for Moses. God was preparing Moses as a shepherd, just as he prepared him to become a prince. Um, 
Moses needed to learn that he had to trust God. He, he needed to learn to trust God rather than himself. So let's see how well you were listening. Now, number six in our class notes, Moses blanked an Egyptian who was beating an Israelite. What did he do to that Egyptian? He killed him, right? So K-I-L-L-E-D. You see, we have a picture um, of the mistreatment of the, of the um, Israelites. So why did he do that? Why did he kill that Egyptian? He was upset that his people were being mistreated, right? So you're going to connect number six to the letter D. Moses was so upset that his people were being mistreated that he killed an Egyptian who was probably one of the task maker, masters in charge of the slaves. So this prompted him to then run, to flee to the land of Midian, right? Because Pharaoh was going to find out or he did find out and he ordered Moses to be killed. So he ran and fled to Midian. So that's number seven, Midian. The blank is M-I-D-I-A-N. Why? Why did he run to the land of Midian? Connect that number seven to letter E because he knew that Pharaoh wanted to kill him. So last question, what was the name of Moses' son with Zipporah? Gershom. All right, guys, so we're going to wrap up the lesson. Today we saw how God protected Moses as a baby and as a grown man. God saved him from Pharaoh's order to kill baby boys by having the princess adopt him. After 40 years, Moses was forced to flee from Egypt because he killed the Egyptian who was beating a slave, one of his people. So we know that Moses was real and that these events happened because they are in God's word. Some people don't believe in the account of Moses. They think that it's all made up. But God has allowed people called archaeologists archeolo to discover things that confirm what the Bible says. Do you know what an archaeologist is? Archaeologists study things that happened in, in our past. So they often dig things up from the ground and the things they find can tell them a lot about people's history. So since Moses was born in 1571, the Pharaoh over Egypt at this time was probably Amenhotep III. Archaeologists and historians have discovered that Pharaoh um, Amenhotep III didn't have he didn't have any sons, but he did have a daughter. His daughter could have been the princess who rescued Moses from the river and brought him to the play, to the palace to be her son. So we can see from the Bible and from history that God uses men and women, rulers, and even slaves to accomplish his plans. He was in control of keeping Moses safe during a dangerous time, and God is sovereign over every detail in our lives too. So if there's anything that's been worrying you, if there's anything that's been scaring you, you can tell God. He knows and cares about every little thing about you. And he will be your comforter and your protector just as he was for Moses. So guys, remember that we have a faithful God who has a perfect plan for us. And he is our Prince of Peace that um, when we lift these things up to him, he gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. So be encouraged, guys. God bless and keep you all the days of your lives. Bye.